in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an AI controller that is going to allow our character to randomly wander around. So if it's for this tutorial or for another tutorial, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out. We are gonna do this by creating a new AI controller that is gonna hold our ability to wander around. And then for anyone who wants to use this controller, we're gonna be able to call upon this AI controller that we create in order to actively wander around. So to start, you can go into your C++ classes and create a new C++ class. We're gonna go and click on all classes here and we are going to search for the AI controller class. And I'm gonna call this my wandering controller. With that created, let's go inside of our header file and we're gonna set up our contract. Now, admittedly, we're not gonna need much here, but let's go over what we are going to need. We're gonna be relying on a navigation system for our AI that's going to be able to pin a specific point within a radius that we set and then allow us to move to it. I'm storing this in a variable called the myNav system. Then we have our actual method we're going to be making called our random movement that is going to be choosing that point in space and then moving us to it. The reason these are in the public section is they are going to be needed across different files. Now, in our protected section, we're going to be overriding a couple of different methods that exist on the base AI controller. First is this onPossess method. You can think of this like begin play, but it comes before begin play. This happens the moment that our AI controller gets attached or possesses to the pawn that is represented by this in pawn variable here. And then we have this onMoveCompleted method, which is automatically called whenever the AI move to method completes its movement. So this is going to allow us to chain different random movements together. So that's at a glance what we're doing. Let's actually build the body now. Let's go into our C++ file and let's start flushing this out. First, at the top of the file, we are going to need to include another file. This is going to be the navigation system that I had talked about earlier. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make that onPossess method. So we're gonna go back into our header file. I'm gonna to go to this onPossess here, and I'm gonna hit Alt and Enter in order to create a definition of onPossess inside of my C++ file. Inside of this function, we are going to be going and doing a few simple things. First, we're gonna go and we're gonna call onPossess on whatever the parent object is so that we don't lose any functionality whenever we go and add to it here. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call a method off of our AI controller called setPawn. This is going to make sure that we recognize that whatever pawn that we are going to have a reference to is going to be the pawn that we are possessing. The reason we are confident this is going to be the pawn we're possessing is because the onPossessed method is giving us a reference to the pawn that we are taking over. And then the final thing we're doing in our possess method here is we're setting up that myNav system variable and we are casting it towards a system v1. The reason we need to cast towards this system v1 navigation is because this is the type of navigation that is going to give us the ability to choose a random point within a radius. And the way we do that is by looking at our world and then getting our navigation system. But this is a little bit weird to see in just text. Inside of our editor, if we go on the right hand side, we can toggle the world settings. Now, if world settings isn't showing up here for you, then you can go over to window and click on world settings and that will allow this window to appear for you. But over in world settings, let's look for navigation. And we can see here that we have a navigation system config. And more important than that, we're going to have a navigation system class. And if we expand this so we can see everything, we are currently set to use the navigation system v1. This works out nicely for us because that is the system that we wanted to use anyway, but this is the area that we are checking when we are making this line of code. We are making our nav system equal to a navigation system v1, which will only be successful if our world is currently using the navigation system v1 as its navigation system. So I hope that connection makes sense now. Next, let's go ahead and set up our random movement. So let's go back into our .h file and we're gonna go and once again hit Alt Enter to create a definition for our random movement inside of our C++ file. And this is the code we're gonna need. So what's going on here is a set of three if statements that are all qualifying if everything that should exist does exist. First, we are making sure that our nav system does exist. If our nav system exists, then we're gonna make sure that the pawn that we set inside of our possess method actually exists. And then assuming all of that takes place, then we can go and actually get a reachable point and then move to that location. But let's go into this section here with a little bit more detail. Our movement here is all hinging on the fact that we can get a random reachable point in radius. And the way we do that is by using the nav system. As I mentioned before, the U navigation system V1 has this method that gets us a random reachable point within a radius that we set here. So to use get random reachable point in radius, we need to give it a location to start searching from, a radius to expand the search by, and an out parameter that is going to 
store the result as an F nav location. The reason we know this is an out parameter is because whenever I hover over, we can see in the declaration of what this method needs that there is an ampersand before the result location. That means this is going to be values that are coming out of the method. So before we go and actually get our random reachable point in radius, I go and create an F nav location variable called result that I pass in so I get that out parameter. And what's important here is again, if I hover over this, we can see that this returns a bool, which means this is perfect for putting into an if statement. So we can say if we are able to get a random point in our radius, then we can go and populate our result field with a point in that radius. And then assuming all of that succeeds, we can then move to our result location. The move to location method is something that exists on any AI controller and it allows us to use a character's built-in movement component to move towards whatever point or location that we're providing. And to draw attention to it, for every if that takes place, there is an else that is basically just logging for me if something that we're checking is equal to null. Because if at any point I'm noticing that something is null, I would want to investigate why that is happening. So now let's go back into our .h file and we're going to create a new declaration for our on move completed and we're going to wrap this up now. Now remember, this on move completed is going to be called whenever our previous movement or this move to location that we did up here finishes. And as such, what we're going to do is we're going to first call the parent method of on move completed to make sure that we don't miss any functionality. And then we're once again going to call random movement so that we can find another random point and move there. And that is all the functionality we need inside of our actual AI controller. But now we're gonna go and we're going to set up the ability to use this AI controller in anything that we would want to be able to wander around. Now for the purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to be using a copy of the default pawn or the default blueprint that exists that our character naturally controls. So let's go ahead and open up the character. In this case, my project is called the third person tutorial. So my character is the third person tutorial character. With that open, make sure you're in your character's C++ file and let's scroll down to wherever we are going and beginning play. The reason we're choosing begin play is because at this point, we know that everything to do with this object should be set up and possessed. So we're gonna change this code by adding on an extra else here that says if we're not actually using a player controller, then let's check to see if we're using our wandering AI controller and then call our random movement if we are. Now you'll see this is giving us a red squiggly mark of doom here and that's because we didn't include the header file. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna to scroll to the top here. I'm gonna copy this line of code with my header file. I'm gonna go back to my C++ on my character. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top and I'm gonna plop in my wandering controller.h file. And then if I scroll back down to begin play, you will see I'm no longer getting the red squiggly of death. So all of this is working. So I'm going to save all of my files and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna compile. Now this does not successfully compile. Notably, there are two unresolved external symbols that are specifically related to the navigation system that we've been using up to this point. Usually when this happens, it's because we haven't properly included the libraries within our build file. So let's do that quickly and see if that resolves the issue. Inside of your file explorer, navigate to where you keep your project files. Open up the source folder and go into the name of your project. Inside of this is a list of all of your different C++ and header files, but there's also this build file. So it's .build.cs. Go ahead and open this up. There will be a line of code here with the public dependency module names. And inside of the range, it lists all of the major libraries that it's able to actually use the files from. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a comma as our delimiter and we're going to add in both the AI module just to be safe and more importantly, our navigation system because that seems to be what's causing all of the errors. So now let's save this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to minimize our code and inside of the actual engine, we're gonna go into tools and we're gonna hit refresh Visual Studio project. And now with that refresh done, let's compile one more time and that successfully compiles. So now let's go into our third person folder, go into our blueprints in order to open up the BP third person character. Once that's open, we're gonna go and we're gonna hit on ourself here and we're going to go and look for a couple of different functions off the right here. The first is going to be auto possess. We can see here that auto possess AI is when we are placed in the world. I'm going to change this to be when we are either placed in the world or spawned. That's just a good thing to have depending on if you'd be spawning these enemies or if you would just be placing them in the world. This covers both instances where we are saying, please give us the AI controller in the event that we don't have a player controller. Next, we're gonna look for the AI controller class. 
and we are going to change this here away from the AI controller that's set by default and towards our wandering controller that we have just finished setting up. So now our default AI controller is going to be the thing that we just spent all this time building. So let's compile and save. Then I'm gonna drag an extra copy of this character into the world, and now I'm gonna hit play. And you can see that nothing is happening, but if I look at my output log, no errors have been thrown. Well, that's because in order for our character to actually be able to navigate, we need to go up to the top here and quickly add to our project something called a nav mesh. And that is gonna be this nav mesh bounds volume. And if we add that to our world, we're gonna go and get a nice aerial view here. And I'm gonna use hotkey R to resize. And I'm going to make this massive. And I'll say that's big enough for now. But what this nav mesh does is it represents the area that our AI is able to navigate. And if I hit the P key, you will see that it highlights the area that the nav mesh is going to be able to walk around on in green. So now with all of that out of the way, we can hit play. And now you will see that our AI is actually able to wander around and it is wandering around aimlessly, just as we coded and just as we intended. And that is how to create a wandering character inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you got value out of this tutorial, please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials.